Hi guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're having an amazing day. And as always, autodidactic means to be self-educated. And guys, in today's world, we need to be self-educated because um, the story we're getting told about history, about everything pretty much, um, is just all lies. It's all false. It's all made up. It's all an illusion put there to keep us under control. So let's have a look. Um, today I wanted to have a look at Geelong. Now Geelong is a, uh, it's a city now, a town um, on Port Phillip Bay in Victoria, Australia. Uh, a couple of hours or an hour or so from Melbourne. And uh, so let's start up. Now these are some old pictures here of the main street in Geelong. And these are from the 1800s. Now, just look at these buildings. I mean, again, you can find these buildings all over the world. Um, you know, we've got dirt roads here. Um, and basically, you know, we've got a fountain in the middle. But where did, where, where did all the workers come from? There's no one here. This is in the 1800s. Now, Geelong was like founded as a town of 500 people back in 1830. Um, these are probably 1880s or so, might be a bit early, I'm not sure, but the population was probably around 5,000 people, and, and when you can see there's no one on the streets. Um, now, this is a, photogra a photograph, obviously, and you can see these guys here, even they're standing still talking, they're even a bit blurry, because with photographs back then, they had to um, expose them for a long time. So if there were people around, there'd be shadows all over the street if there were people moving, but there's no one there, but there's all these grand old world architecture buildings. So what's going on? Okay, here's another one um, in Geelong, another main street. And as you can see, there's hardly anyone around. You can see all these, you know, red brick buildings down here. You know, we've got spires coming off them like we always see. Um, and this light post, um, if you Notice that these kind of uh, lamps, light posts, are everywhere all throughout the world. It's just like a standard design. Um, you know, sometimes they have a ball on them, sometimes they're like this. Um, but yeah, there's a the main street. As you can see, there's a few cars, but there's not really any people there. We've got all these huge buildings. This is again the same kind of thing, and you know, look at this. This is what we, you know, people would call Roman kind of architecture. You know, we've got the massive pillars, the arches on this building, which we find everywhere. It's the same architecture, even the bricks. You know, the way that they fill in the brickwork uh, to make it, you know, for the facade. It's all the same. And yeah, but there's no one there. No one there. So who built all this stuff? You can see it going off into the distance, and this is. You know who built it all? Where did all where did all the you know the glass come from and the products and everything? And this is you know a shot of this is Geelong as well, but this is what you would expect to see. There's actually people here, workers, and they've got a wooden building that they've built, and these are all wooden houses. You know, same kind of dirt streets, bit of pipe in the ground here, but but that's what you would expect to see rather than those old world big grand buildings. And again, this is um, Mount Moriac. The Minters choose a different direction. This is just a story about a family who moved to Geelong, uh, arriving in Port Phillip in March 1850. They settled uh, in Mount Moriac near Geelong. And this is the house they built. And now these were, you know, they were quite wealthy people. You can see, you know, he's got his suit and his top hat and his shoes. She's obviously dressed up to the nines. And, you know, but. They didn't build brick, these massive, massive mansions that we hear about and that we see and what we're told, you know, we're just mansions for landowners. They've just got a wooden house, which you would, you would expect. You know, another photo of them. I'm not sure if uh, Minter family at the home in Mount Moriakia, 1856. And that is what you would expect to see there. But we're told, like the post office I'll show you later, that was supposed to have been built in 1841. <coughs> Excuse me. So things just don't really add up. You know, we're being sold this story about our history and how things happen in this linear, 
this linear fashion, excuse me, that's my chair squeaking, uh, how things happen in this linear fashion, but quite, quite clearly they didn't because all over the world we have, you know, the dolmens, megalithic stone structures, star forts, all the, the same old world architecture, it's everywhere, it's all the same. There's a church, you know, that could be in any city in the world pretty much. Here they are relaxing. Now this is Durigal, uh, this is late 1800s, 1880s, 1890s, and look at that building. Again, you see these, these buildings everywhere with these big kind of towers at the front of them. Um, you know, they're everywhere. I've um, got the arches, all this kind of stuff. So how are they building that? And, and uh, I've got a bit more on that. Which, let's have a look. Um, it was built as a family home. Here we go. Sorry, I think that side of this video is going to be cut off just because I've got to get the right screen size for YouTube. But it says um, HM, uh, Her, you know, Her Majesty's Prison during Duringal is a minimum security prison located in Duringal, Victoria, Australia, so, uh, situated 100, 160 kilometres north of Melbourne. So this was completed in 1877. Okay, it was originally a homestead for a large family. Now it had 68 rooms. <clears throat> 68 rooms, guys. And it was built in 1877 as a house. Now, I mean, come on, that just doesn't make sense. Now, like, you know, apart from, you know, the labour, you know, where did the labour come from? Where did all the products come from? You know, it's not that's not a normal house. Like, where did all the glass come from? All the door fittings. All the hinges, all the nails, all the tools to make it. You know the 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 iron, you know the iron in it for the structure, the the um <clears throat> everything, the clock faces. You know all the the fittings. I mean these these things. You know the foundation. Who was who was doing all this? And where are the designs? I've, I've searched and there's no designs. There's nothing on how it was built or where anything came from. All we get is Jirungul is. An architectural is of architectural significance as one of Victoria's grandest homesteads and a fine example of the Victorian Italian style, right? I mean, what? Victorian Italian style. So basically, it's just saying it's, it's the same as the buildings all around the world that they call Italian style. It is significant as a rare work of the short lived but prominent architectural par uh, partnership of Lloyd Taylor and Wyatt Duringle. And that's all you get. That's all you get. Um, I haven't even really found how long it took to build. I think they're just saying it was built in a year, you know, in, in 1877. So, you know, what the, what the. Um, now, another thing that happened in Geelong is um, orphan, orphans, you know, the shipping of children around the world to repopulate by the looks of its cities and, and these children were, you know, most of them, I would, I'd say probably, you know, the vast majority of them, they had families and parents. Uh, most of the time they were taken away if the parents, you know, didn't have enough money. So it comes down to this money thing and, you know, money's more important if you can't support your kids or we'll just take your kids, we won't help you. And then they get shipped around the world. Now this is still happening today. Governments are still taking people's children off them for money because they're saying you don't have enough money. So they're saying money is more important than humans. Instead of helping you, we'd rather just take your kids away now. I understand that there's a lot of situations, you know, where there's violence and drugs and that's a different thing, but this is happening to people just, you know, and it, for money and things like, you know, trying to treat your children with alternative therapies and natural remedies. Because we all know that big pharma, you know, all their products are poison. But if you try and look after your kids, they can be taken off you. And this is, you know, this was happening 150 years ago, 200 years ago, and it's still happening today. And of course, with the whole Prince Andrew, Jeffrey Epstein thing, we know that, you know, child trafficking is still happening and it's still big business today. On the orphanage committee, but pointed out that there is no Catholic amongst them and no one but a Catholic can, can, can conscientiously guarantee to us the education of Catholic children in their own religion. So, you know, it was all about indoctrination as well. Um, after almost two years to the day, Father 
June's letter was published to Foundation uh, Stone for St. Augustine's Catholic or or <laughs> Orphanage was laid at Newtown to Long. So they set up to bring kids in. Uh, this is the orphanage, St. Vincent de Paul's Orphanage, Emerald Hill, 1862. So this is, you know, 40 years after Geelong was a town. You know, who built this? And it's a lot of work, you know, just to, you know, to bring orphans in that you're just then going to abuse, basically. Um, there's a bit more, I'm not sure if it's this one, but basically this says it's all just about religion and indoctrination. Alright, so let's just have a look at some photos to finish here. So this is a Durangal homestead that we talked about before, 68 rooms built as someone's house. So they tell us, that's not the best picture, you can sort of see it a bit better there. Um, now this is it in the 1880s, this is an actual photo obviously, the last one was a drawing. But you can see we've got this classic out the front, this classic, you know, tower that we see everywhere, you know, the arches, the columns, classic old world architecture, Tartarian, little bits on the top there, the fence. You know, it's the same stuff we see all over the world. And now this is inside. I couldn't get many pictures of, um, inside. All I could get was the stained glass. But, you know, the, the question arises, I mean, these were different. They're not actual work stained glass. I'm not sure what they are, but you know who made this? Who 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 what? Who were the artisans who made this? Where did the glass come from? Where did the lead come from? You now you would need whole industries just to get the the products to be able to make this window. But I, I did look. I searched and I searched for glass makers in Geelong in the 1850s and 60s and 70s, and I couldn't find anything. This obviously 1877 they've written there, and if you look, this looks a lot more simplistic to this. Whoops. Okay, see how this looks a lot, just a lot more intricate, a lot more, it just looks, well, yeah, better, better craftsmanship than this. This looks like it's an inline. They've probably done that so they can get 1877 in there. You know, they've tried to match the blue, but they haven't really done it. Kind of match the red. And then we have these around, and I'll just point out, what do they look like? Star forts. More on that coming up. Um, here it is again. Obviously, massive structure. And again, and here's one of those light posts that we see all over the world. Lamp posts. It looks like it's been painted here, but as you can see, it's a huge red brick structure. Classic old world architecture. This is the Geelong Bayview Hotel in the 1880s. Um, as you can see, it looks like it's just down out in the middle of nowhere. There's a bit of a wood building here, another building there. Nothing, you know, just dirt, muddy roads. Here's one of those lampposts again. Um, and just, you know, bits of wood here. Like It just looks like a mess. And if you look here, under this window, looks like we've got something sunken there. And you can't really see it, but in here as well. Um, yeah, you can see that one there, and sort of underneath this window in here as well. I've got a better photo of this. Uh, let's have a look. This one here. So this is the same building in modern times, and as you can see, under the windows, we've got these windows going into the ground, and we've got... <laughs> are they, that looks like the steps there. Is that... Oh, it's just a funny shadow. That's the door there, but they're still built. Yeah, they've had to build steps up to it. This must be a reflection. Ah, oh, it's a reflection of the traffic light. But yeah, so you can see the same thing that we always see. Uh, perfect symmetry things built right on top of each other. We've got columns here. We've got the railing around the roof, and we've got the sunken story. And as you can see, this it's not level. This building, it's slightly higher at this end than it is at this end. And if you're going to build a building like this, that's a three-story building at least, that's a heavy building you would, and for that kind of gradient, you would just level the ground. You wouldn't build it in that much. You just wouldn't. Um, okay. Now this is Geelong, this is obviously a picture, but it's from 1850, a painting or a drawing. I just found it interesting that we have, you know, these two-story houses here in 1850, you know, with columns, you know, just 
the art, the portico triangle things, just the classic, classic architecture already there. Apparently in 1850. Uh, this is the Geelong Mutual Life Assurance Building. Uh, this is in 1930 and look at that nice dome. Again, you find these all over the world and uh, these port, you know, round port windows. It's a big red brick building, you know, it's got the bits on the dome, bit of a spire up there maybe. And this one, you can see the building here and you can see what's next with this massive, big, long, old world building too, that looks a bit short. <laughs> um, and then I'll show you a picture of it today. They've knocked down that beautiful old building that was next to it and built this ugly, probably consumerist shop. Uh, but this building's still here and we still, there's a spy there on the roof. Classic. Uh, now this is the Geelong National War Museum. As you can see, <laughs> look at that. You know, it's just, that's just classic architecture. The portico, the pillars, you know, I've got them repeated here. We've got these things that you see a lot. I'm not sure what they are. Um, obviously, you know, it's just modern antennas up there now, but perfect symmetry all the way down and this building also looks like it's on a bit of a slope I'm not sure I've got some other photos I think um, now I'm not I think this is the same building I think before it was the museum it was called the, it was actual the wool stores so it looks like it's been painted done up a bit or well, maybe that's time I'm not sure but anyway this is Geelong Strawn's building a wall store and you can probably already see it. This is back in the 70s. I can just tell by the cars here and look at this window 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 window. Now if you look at the line here you'll see that up here it's probably about ground level and as it comes down it gets deeper and deeper. So again a building like that's a massive building and obviously we've got all the you know portico triangles, the symmetry, arches. But if you're going to build a building that big you you would flatten the ground you wouldn't build it that little tiny gradient you know you wouldn't dig a hole just for that gradient you'd flatten the whole ground it, it, it you know just to get the foundation in to build it on a gradient now to say that would, would be done is madness this is the same building today as you can see it looks like they've bricked in all the building all the um the windows below ground level and there's one more. This is a close-up of another side. I think this must be a bit older, but you can see they're definitely there. Picked up this window. So yeah, what's going on here? This is the interior of that building, and look, this was built as they they say as you know, like basically a warehouse for wool, you know, the wool stores. Uh, <laughs> and look at this roof. Uh, seriously, this was the inside of a of just a warehouse. For wool, for storing wool. I mean, that's it's just really look at that. I mean, it's not the best. It's a bit of a small photo, but yeah, right. Here's another one of it, and you can just see, you know, just things like building that arching ceiling is just so much work for a warehouse that you're going to pack wool into. Uh, now this is in Geelong as well, the Gordon Institute of TAFE building and as you can just see the gradient there. So you've got four windows here up to absolutely nothing like that. That's a ground level there, that, that's the top building, uh, the top window here. It actually looks like this might, I don't know, this looks a bit different this part of the building. I mean this doesn't but it looks like there's been something done to here. Maybe they've just changed out all the windows or something because this middle bit and this bit here look like they match there. But who knows, but you can see again, like a building this size you would not build into the ground. You would like for that for one story you would level that ground. You would just level it because it would be so much more cost effective and easier to put the foundations in and faster too. So, you know and if you think that that's just natural build up of, of the, the ground level over what less than a hundred years then okay uh, and then there's just the other shots of Geelong so that's it guys just a bit of a wander around Geelong just to show you that these 
you know, these buildings, these old world buildings, this same old architecture, it's all around the world, you know, it, they're all red brick columns, you know, the mud flood, you know, the, the, the um, floors under the ground, windows going into the ground, it's not how you would build a building, especially, the, you know, you wouldn't <laughs> build these massive buildings just slightly into the ground, it's just, it wouldn't happen. But we find it all over the world. So what's going on here? There's obviously been some previous civilization that was all over the world, and research that's been done recently is, you know, it's pointing to that this wasn't that long ago. We're talking, you know, four or five hundred years, maybe. Um, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please leave me a comment, like, share this uh, video if you like it, because. The more shares and likes and comments I get, uh, then basically the more this video will turn up in front of people who don't know about these about these concepts and the mud flood. So we want to get the info out there. So whatever you can do to help, uh, I will always appreciate. Also, down below in the um, show me more bit, you'll find that I've got a Facebook page and Instagram page. So please go ahead and like them. And there's also autodidactic t-shirts for sale. You'll find the link. Uh, so grab one and get out there and tell the world it's time to become self-educated. All right, guys, hope you liked that one. Have an amazing day, and I'll catch you on the next upload. Bye for now.